Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. This video is the ultimate guide to hot tub pumps. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so without a pump, our hot tubs are pretty much useless. They won't be cleaned, they won't be filtered, they won't be heated, and they certainly won't give us any jets. So the hot tub pump is absolutely key to it, the functioning of our hot tubs. So in this video, I thought I'd do a deep dive about all things hot tub pump, everything from how they work, the different sizes, the different types, and down to how we replace them as well. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be an absolute expert on hot tub pumps. Now, before we get going, always a great opportunity. I always like to get this in there to say, please do subscribe to the channel. It just gives me loads of motivation to make these videos. I make two long form videos just like this every single week, a whole bunch of shorts and everything on this channel focuses around hot tubs, plunge pools, hot tub parts, and pretty much everything in between. Okay, so with that out the way, let's dive in and look at all things hot tub pump. So there's two main types of pumps. You have circulation pumps and you have jet pumps. The circulation pump, as the name suggests, is used for moving the water through the filter, through the heater, and back into the tub. And it does this really slowly it draws a small amount of current so that we're not costing the earth to actually run these things and it keeps our hot tubs clear filtered and warm now in terms of the size of a circulation pump they're generally less than a horsepower normally less than half a horsepower so somewhere between 0.33 half even three quarters for a larger tub is around the size of a circulation pump Jet pumps, again, clues in the name, their role is to take water from the tub and deliver it back through the jets as quickly as it can. Pretty straightforward, okay? So those two different types. Now, those two different types of pump can come in two different speed options. Now, we don't have variable speed pumps yet. They are on their way. And if you haven't seen my video that I did with Gecko and what they're doing with variable speed pumps, then check that out. But at the moment, our options are either single speed or dual speed. Now, if we have dual speed pumps, the chances are we don't have a circulation pump because the role of a dual speed pump is to be able to do both of those tasks. So on low speed, it will do the filtration and the heating and on high speed, it will do the jets. And it means that your hot tub can just have one pump as opposed to, to two or, or multiple options there. You can always tell what you have by opening up the cabinet if you're looking on your regular hot tub and just seeing what's underneath. If you've got more than one pump, then the chances are you've got a dedicated circulation pump and a dedicated jet pump. Of course, there are tubs that go against this rule and they have multiple dual speed pumps. So to get the exact answer, always look at the manufacturer's spec sheets. They will tell you exactly what's inside of that tub. Now, you're going to need to know that if you need, for example, to replace a pump, which I'm going to cover uh, later on in this video. So what are the other options that are available with our pumps? Well, firstly, is the horsepower. I've touched on this already. They can start very, very small from a 15th or 30th of a horsepower, right up to these huge six, seven, eight horsepower beasts. Okay, so the one inside of your hot tub will probably be somewhere in the middle of that range. You can always tell, look on the side of the pump, it will always give you a model, whack that into Google and it will tell you, you know, what horsepower your actual pump is. You need it if you're replacing it because you always swap like for like, you know, don't try and upgrade and put more power in and that kind of thing. It's not going to end pretty. Your tubs are designed to take a size of pump, so make sure you swap it out and go like for like. Now, the other thing that you've got to be careful with with a pump is the frame size. Now, the frame size has nothing to do with the physical size of your pump. It's about the size of the, the feet and where the bolts are for bolting it down. Now, you want to again match that frame size when you're replacing the pump if you need to in your hot tub. Now, you can determine the frame size really easily 
With a ruler or a tape measure, you're gonna measure the distance between the bolts. If they measure around four inches, then you're gonna have a 48 frame as it's known. And if it measures about five and a half inches, then you're gonna have a 56 frame pump. Pretty straightforward, but you do need to know that when you're replacing and switching out, just so you can get like for like. So match the frame size, match the horsepower, and lastly, you need to match the inlet size and the discharge size. So what are they? Well, at the front of the pump is where you have the inward suction, and that's called the inlet, and that will have a, a physical size. Now, the physical size is the size of the union that goes on that. The union is the, it's normally white. It's a, a screwable nut that then connects the pump to the rest of your plumbing. On a circulation pump, generally these are one and a half inch. On a jet pump, generally these are two inch. So I'm generalizing here because it's quite common as well to find two and a half inch. So you do need to check. You can measure it. When you're measuring, you're measuring the internal size of the thread. You're not measuring the physical union. That will give you a huge union size that's not correct. So you're gonna measure the, the thread on your actual pump if you're not sure. But again, Google the part number, you'll find in the manufacturer's spec sheet the exact size of that. You do need to match those, of course, when you're replacing a pump, otherwise it won't fit. Okay, so how do we replace a pump? Well, it's pretty straightforward and I'll just walk you through the steps now. So firstly, you're gonna disconnect the power, turn off your rotary breaker, one of those two, you don't wanna be working on a live tub. Next, you're gonna to go to the pump and you're actually gonna take the cover off where the cable or the cord goes in and you're gonna to need to use a spanner or a wrench to loosen the nuts to then remove the power cable. If you have a single speed pump, you'll have three cables to remove. If you have a dual speed pump, there will be four cables that you need to remove. Next, you're gonna make sure either that you've emptied the tub or you've got your gate valves either side turned off and closed because you don't wanna empty your tub when you disconnect your pump on this stage. So before you actually loosen any of the union nuts, it's always a good point to actually unscrew the pump from the base. So whilst it's still in the plumbing, often those screws can be quite tight. So unscrew it from the base so that when you undo your union nuts, the pump will slide straight out. Top tip to undo union nuts, if they're on really, really tight, then you can use an oil filter wrench. You can pick those up on Amazon for next to nothing and it will just give you a really good grip around the union and you'd be able to loosen even the tightest of unions with an oil filter wrench. With the unions disconnected, really easy now, the pump should just slide out. And then when you're fitting your new one, obviously, as I keep saying, you're gonna match like for like. You can switch brands uh, as long as you're matching the inlet and the discharge size of pipe, as I've mentioned, the horsepower size should match, the number of speeds should match, and of course the frame size should match. And then we're gonna do the steps in reverse. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect up those unions. Top tip, when you're doing this, always a good opportunity to actually change the gasket inside of the union. There's a little black gasket that fits inside of the union. Change it out, just means you're not gonna have any leaks anytime soon. With the unions connected, bolt the pump back down into the, the ground or the base, wherever it is being held, and then you're gonna put those cables back in. When you're putting the cord back in, make sure you're connecting those up to the right terminals. And my top tip here is don't rely on the colors, don't rely on it being the same as the pump that you've just taken out. Check the circuit diagram for the pump, which will be on the side of the pump, and check the pinout diagram for your spa pack. Trace each one back just to make sure you're connecting the right terminal to the right connector on your cord. And that's it. This is definitely something that you can do as a DIY. You don't need to get a professional out to come and do this for you. It's a simple process to replace a pump. So hopefully this video will give you a little bit of comfort that you can actually do it yourself. Of course, if you have any questions at all, please hit me up in the comments or get in touch via the website. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks for the watch and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. 
I'll see you on the next video.